Hello, snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host, Averin Lefebvre, and in this video, we're gonna be reviewing the Borealis Koi. This board features Borealis's powder camber, which is rocker in the nose, then camber throughout the rest of the board. That rocker in the nose is gonna give you ease of entry in and out of turns, as well as more optimal powder float, while that camber section in the back is gonna give you more pop, snap, and drive. This board's available in 152, 156, and 160. I rode this board at Copper Mountain on a sunny bluebird day that had four inches of fresh pow on top of 10 inches from the previous day. You had perfect corduroy, chopped chunder, and a little bit of ice. And I rode it with my Rome black label bindings and my K2 Thraxxus boots. This board is on the stiffer side, but it's not a full blown plank. And with the shaping of it, you do get a directional flex. So you got more flex in the nose that's accentuated by that rocker than it stiffens up back through the tail. The torsional flex is noticeable, but it's very responsive, so it snaps back really quickly. And when it comes to stability, you do get some chatter in the nose from that rocker, and that will slightly resonate back underfoot. But from the front insert pack back through the tail, this board is very smooth and stable. You notice that it will plow through just about everything in its path. This board has a really weird slow pop initiation, which means that if you're not being calculated with how you engage it, you're gonna get very mild pop. But if you're staying on top of it and you're being more precise with your riding and with how you load it, when you roll back on the tail and disengage it, you're gonna be able to boost. Speed will be your friend here. It's one of those boards that if you know what you're doing, you can get it to pop. But if you don't, you're never gonna get what you fully want out of it. Due to the flex on this board, it's a chewer to butter. With the tail, it's high speed wheelies all day and you're still muscling it. With the nose, when you go to pop a 180, you're putting more work, more pressure, leveraging your weight way out over it to get it to engage. And even then, it's still not gonna give you what you want. Basically, keep this thing straight and slash snow. You'll be way happier with it. There's a methodical edge to edge power transmission with this board. It's not fast and aggressive. It's slow, calculated, and precise. This means that if you're thinking you're gonna ankle steer it and really just be able to twist the board and drive tight, quick carves very fast, it's not gonna happen. So those medium mellow carves where you got some time to really think about what you're doing, where this board comes alive. Speed will always be your friend here. And when you drive it, you notice that it engages slightly outside the front foot but it steers predominantly from the middle back through the tail. That's where all your power and drive is, right through that camber in there. When you really lay this board over, there is a fine line between finessing it and manhandling it. And you have to cross that at times to be able to get what you want out of this board. If you like driving really hard, fast, aggressive carves, this isn't a bad option. But if you're looking for something that's more laid back and playful, it's not gonna happen and it will probably buck you or not engage the way you want it to. Who's this board for? The powder hound that rides more wide open terrain and wants a hovercraft-esque type of board. So it's been a couple years since I rode this board and honestly, I don't think anything's changed at all. This is still a board that requires more space to turn it. It's not the best in tight trees. You end up getting a workout. If anything, it feels like a combination of the old Rome Stalefish and the old Jones hovercraft combined but with a stiffer flex pattern. It's not a bad board, but you have to be the right type of rider to get the most out of it. There's things that I like about it, there's things that I don't like about it. I like the fact that the shape is very hovercraft-esque. I like the fact that if you haul balls and know how to carve, you're not gonna have a bad time with it. But when you need to be laid back, it leaves a lot more to be desired. Comparable boards, the Jones Ultra Mind Expander. The Battalion Camel 2, the GNU Gremlin. Binding recommendations, the Battalion Astro Full Wrap, the Now Drive Plus, the Nitro Phantom Plus. This has been my review of the Borealis Koi. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you own one? Are you gonna buy one? Leave me a comment down below. Let's have a conversation about this snowboard. If you're new here, remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications. That way you're not missing any of the videos we got coming out for all you snowboarders of the internet. And if you really like what we're doing over here and you want to support us further, swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP and become a member. Sure, I could tell you more here, but I got a video over there that explains it so much better. As always, I've been your host, Averin Lefebvre, and I'll see you in another video. Mm -hmm.